What's up, YouTube? This is Riot. Uh, hopefully you haven't forgotten about me. It's been a little while since I've been uploading videos. Hopefully you've seen my old Source videos from back in the day. Um, been playing Counter-Strike off and on for the last 10 years, uh, but been playing a lot of Go recently. And it's cool to see that it's uh, getting popular with the esports scene and a lot of new players are coming in. And there's kind of a big resurgence in it right now. So I thought, what better time to start, I don't know, getting back into movie making. Um, I've been streaming a lot recently at twitch.tv slash riot12345. I just started out, so I would really appreciate any followers or any support. That'd be awesome. I've been streaming a little bit on YouTube, kind of testing the waters there as well. So please kind of be on the lookout for that. Um, and I'd also like to start making more tutorial videos, more gameplay videos, not only of Counter-Strike, but of Hearthstone and Street Fighter V when that comes out, and playing a lot of that as well. Um, so what I thought I would, wanted to do, since I kind of got this a lot on questions from... Um, like in the, the YouTube messages over the years, like how do I do certain things? And I thought since there's so many new players, I wanted to kind of reintroduce myself and show some basic things with rifles and spray control and what to think about in Counter-Strike. Because I see a lot of new players making mistakes and I want to help those guys out. So this is basically rifle tutorials and just kind of general gameplay sense of things you need to think about when playing Counter-Strike Go that will make you a better player. Apologies for these sunlights. It looks like I'm glowing right now. Um, but let's get into it. I started a server offline with bots. Um, I'm not actually going to use the bots, but this is going to be a really good way for you guys to practice. So kind of do what I do here. I'll show you some uh, commands and some things to think about in order to practice your rifling and to just get to be a better Counter-Strike player in general. So first of all, we're going to turn off and on some commands here. First, I will do SV underscore uh, cheats one. It's offline server, so we're going to turn on some uh, some special commands. Uh, let's get rid of all these bots. So bot underscore kick, we don't need them. Let's do impulse 101, which gives us some money to work with here. And then now we're going to do a couple other things. SV underscore infinite underscore ammo one. So that way we can just kind of spam all over and we never lose any ammo so we don't have to buy. Um, we also now want to do SV show impacts one. And what this does, as you can see, it shows all of these little bullet impact uh, markers. So, why this is a good thing is you can see exactly where your shots are landing. Because a lot of times for new players, I always hear, oh, I was totally on his head, or I was, I was totally on him. Uh, and it, it wasn't on him. Um, so this is a good way to practice. Now, with an AK. Uh, AK is probably my favorite weapon. Uh, probably one of the best in the game, in my opinion. As a terrorist, you're probably going to be spending... 12 or so rounds at least um, with an AK, unless you're dying a lot. Um, so, if we look, here's why this is good with these impacts. You can kind of see it shows all of these spray patterns. If I just hold down the button without moving my mouse, this is what happens with an AK. It goes up and to the side, a trajectory that's not very helpful for you. Um, especially vertically. You don't have a lot of vertical movement in Counter-Strike, okay? So what you have to do, and this is why I recommend going into a kind of a private offline server like this, you need to kind of combat that uh, trajectory. So if it goes up and to the right, you need to pull your mouse down and to the left. So what you're gonna do is immediately, when you start firing, you're gonna pull down slightly, and after a second or so, you'll pull off to the left a little bit. So you're, trying to, you're gonna try to make a, a focused spread. Let's try that again. So pulling down to the left. And notice most of my shots kind of go into the center. And that wasn't very good, but I, I kind of pulled a little too far to the side. It's really pretty slight. You pull down softly and then over. And that's not really very good either. Let's try this again. So there we go. That's pretty good. I'm pulling down to the left a little bit. They're For the most part, they're in that center circle. And that's a heck of a lot better than all the way up there to the side, which is me not moving my mouse at all. So you want to try to get a, a centralized, circular kind of pattern. That was a good one. So I'm pulling down, down, down to the left, and it gives you that circle. Now you have to recognize when and when you should not be spraying. If they're at this distance to the wall, or someone like comes around a corner, like that's a good spray thing. If they're over there, like coming off that lift, or off that lip, you can't really spray. It's just too far away. 
especially with an AK, with, which is kind of a crazy spray pattern, okay? So again, you want to get out of the habit of spraying as much as possible, but there are some situations where you need to. So even at a distance, you can still kind of pull down and, well, it's not really that even, but you can kind of pull down to the left and kind of keep it centralized. Now, same thing goes with the M4, for the most part. It's not quite as exaggerated as the AK pattern. However, it is, for the most part, pretty similar. Now, the Silence M4 is slightly different. It has a tighter spread, um, but with the M4, I don't know. A lot of people have gone back to it since the nerfs, but of the Silence one, anyway. Sil this is without me holding my mouse in any different direction. So, again, similar. It goes up. This one banks to the left and then off to the right. Similarly, you can kind of pull down, and it will pretty much stay in a central... Um, now with any gun or any rifle I should say because SMGs like P90s are different you can just kind of spray a little bit more but with a M4 you kind of want to you want to just do these like three to five burst sprays anyway you don't want to spray much more because like as you can see after the first couple it starts going all over the place so really the M4s are pretty good at these tight compact little three, five, seven burst shots. Um, but you don't want to go too much more than that. Um, because the, a or the M4 won't insta headshot you, so you kind of have to get in the habit of these little um, mini bursts. Um, otherwise, it's just going to do you the classic, oh, 81 and 1 or something, right? I dinked him, but it didn't quite go through. Um, so yeah, you want to try to do these focused little bursts. And this goes with AK as well. Now, speaking of AK... I want to show you guys kind of a mindset behind how you should be positioning your crosshair and how you should be um, moving around in the game because that is one of the key things. Um, always, always, always. If you are running forward and you start to shoot, basically it's not going to work at all. It, you can see my pattern goes everywhere. I'm just peppering the walls here. Um, even if I'm strafing and I'm holding it down, it doesn't really work. Um, so what you really need to get in the habit of it's what I call like run stopping. So as I, you want to strafe pretty much everything, okay? So I'm I'm strafing, I'm holding left, and then I, oh, that didn't work. Uh, I'm holding right, I should say. And immediately before I, I shoot, I'm basically clicking the other direction. So I'm, I'm, if I'm going left, I tap right, and I shoot. And it pretty much goes where my crosshair is at. Um, and that's why you can see the pros get those one taps that are really satisfying. Uh, because they have really good control of when they are like moving and when they are stopping, right? So like as I'm peeking this, uh, you wanna think about kind of where the normal traditional spots that the CTs in this case are gonna be watching. Now, this is why in my old videos, for instance, I would always be called a hacker because I would like pre-fire people in random spots. Well, it's because people always play there. So as I'm turning this corner, if I'm taking B, you kinda think, you have to think very methodically about this. So as I'm turning, you want to basically check all the common spots and keeping it at head level. Your crosshair really should remain always at head level of where the CT or the enemy is going to be playing. So as I check, this is the first spot probably that they could possibly be. And notice I can't really be seen from platform or anything else, so there's no reason not to check this. If you just like run out like this, you're basically being seen from there, there, and there. You would need to check methodically, okay? So there, to there, to barrel, to the top of the box. Now the next spot that they could be is this little opping lane here, I guess. Next spot's right there, there. I guess either door or up here, depending. Sometimes they hop up there, it's pretty rare. But mostly they'll retreat to door, sometimes right there, and sometimes hiding right there, okay? Um, but the thing is, when you're peeking this stuff, in my opinion, if, if they know you're there, and time's gonna run out here, I guess, but um, you want to kind of shoot a little warning shot, right? You, or pre-fire, basically. If you hit them, great. You have to realize um, that they have the advantage on you. If they are opping from platform, they're just going to be watching for you to kind of slowly creep out or run out. They have an advantage. So any reaction that you can get on them is going to be really, really crucial. So if, if you're here, sometimes just popping off a shot or two at least kind of keeps them in check. Um, or it keeps them scared, which sometimes helps too, where they're gonna like duck or not peek. But you wanna you wanna do this little run stop, right? This little left and then hit right and then shoot. 
this is just something you're gonna have to practice, but you have to get used to that. That is how you become a good rifler. It's little run stop burst shots. Because otherwise, you spraying like that, whatever, that it doesn't work. So run, stop, run, stop, click. That's basically the strategy there. So as you peek, kind of um, peek each spot. You peek at where the head level is going to be. And just always be ready for that little burst, right? That little one-stop burst. A door, right? They're, they're going to be, if you're not smoking, which you always should. But it's going to be there, then there, then there, whatever. So you have to think about those little run stops. That's going to keep your, your bullet placement where you want it to go instead of running for it like that. Right, um, and e even with bursts, it's still really pretty good. So these little run stop bursts, you can kind of see they're pretty they're pretty compact. And if you don't hit them on that first shot, or, or for they're kind of dinked, even from a distance, they're pretty pretty accurate. So you have to think about that. Practice these little run stops because that's how you get the accuracy. That oftentimes players from like Call of Duty or something where you can just kind of spray and kill them really easily I'm not trying to call out other games I guess but um, you have to get used to these um, like the movement in this. and it's pretty hard at first but these little run stops are really important um, last thing I want to show you it's kind of a cool thing if you do show impacts underscore penetration one you can see how bullets react to objects so you can see the metal or the box is labeled as metal and it stops a bullet. So you cannot spam this, right? It stops, it shows you how the damage is applied. Um, however, something like this goes through. Now let me show you then, if I can find a good example. I think these walls, a lot of times the edges of walls, basically, can be spammed. Maybe not that one. I know there's one in long A, for instance. But I mean, that's how people pick the doors mid, right? Um, I always try to pick through the left door as they jump across. Um, but even like because you can go through walls, that one that run stop pre firing like I was talking about, that can really help sometimes. Even if even if you're not peeking all the way, like these little quick pre fire peeks, you can see it it goes through this wall or it goes through the door and it's actually penetrating all the way back. Now obviously the the wall is gonna take away some of the damage, but if they got dinked, sometimes you can shoot through these walls or these little quick peeks, um, you can really kind of tag people. That's why, like right here, sometimes just kind of holding this little tight angle is really helpful. Again, you can shoot, you can shoot through this wall for the most part. Um, and that can help you get some extra damage and not really be seen. It's really hard for a CT to kind of like deal with these little immediate peaks unless they're kind of pre-firing you back. So just keep in mind that you can shoot through the corners of the wall and that can help you dealing with rushes or um, kind of taking advantage of what's called peeker's advantage. When you're peeking, you have a slight visual advantage over um, a guy that's kind of coming. So sometimes these little tags through the wall can benefit you. Okay, so that's basically it. I just talked about spray control, crosshair placement, and kind of just that run stop is really important. You just gotta make sure as you are taking a sight or you're moving around, you're basically sweeping the area, that's what I call it. So as I'm coming around here, I've checked here, I sweep up here, the next spot would probably be like right there, right? Because sometimes they're offing or something. The next spot is right here. A lot of times CTs will retreat here or boost over. So like right there, right there. Next spot would be CT, spotting there. Probably right there, uh, maybe there, but I would probably bet more on cat at that point. And then again, you're just kind of checking all of these spots as you go. Uh, you have to do it one at a time. Even as I'm going right here, I check here, and here, whatever. You can't just run around, right? Uh, so hopefully this helps you. Think about your crosshair at head level at all times. Strafe, run, stop, shoot, and make sure you're clearing spot, spot to spot, so that way you're not um, getting shot or vulnerable from any one position. So hopefully this helps you. Um, please consider hopping on and watching me stream sometime at twitch.tv slash riot12345. Or YouTube, kind of check out my stream on there, see if I'm live ever. And I would appreciate you subscribing, liking, following, all of that social stuff. 
um, on YouTube and Twitch. It would help me out, and it's fun to talk to people in the chat. Please let me know if there are any tutorials or gameplay footage types of matches or whatever that you'd like to see. I'd really like to start producing more content for you guys. Um, hopefully this helps. Maybe next time I can talk about AWP, Deagle, other SMGs or something. But hopefully this rifling tutorial gives you some stuff to think about and some stuff to practice. So hop into the server, practice run, stop, shoot, sweeping the scene basically, and your recoil control. And that will become that will help you become a much stronger CS player and raise those matchmaking ranks, all right? Uh, peace out. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, and I will see you guys later.